So Windows is a preemptive multitasking operating system. What does that mean in simple terms? It means it can run multiple applications, it can run background services, and the kernel, the operating system, is preemptive. That means it's proactive in assigning resources to those tasks. Now, what kind of resources do they need? Well, CPU, how much CPU time does it get? Memory, how much memory allocation is given to each task? Uh, disk access, network access, GPU access, and so on. Now, the first tool that you should use when you want to monitor the overall system on Windows, how it's handling those tasks, where the memory is being allocated, where the CPU is being used, is the Windows Task Manager. Now, in this video, I want to talk a little bit about tasks, the general idea of processes and virtual memory and the resources. But in the main part, I want to show you how to use the Task Manager to your advantage. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, I do have lots of videos here on this channel covering the basic concepts of tasks and virtual memory. But as a quick refresher, in a multitasking operating system, each app, each program that gets launched has its own virtual memory. That's not real memory, it's virtual memory with a unique address range. And then that is mapped onto some physical memory. And that mapping is done by the kernel. And then as each task wants some CPU time, the kernel says, OK, now it's your turn to run. You can run a little bit. OK, next task, it's your turn to run and so on. And the same for disks, the same for network. It allocates the different resources. Now, in Windows, these tasks appear in the task manager and you can see what they're doing. You can see how much CPU time they're using, how much memory they're using and so on. So when you have tasks, everything is great when nothing is misbehaving. But there are occasions when a task can suddenly go uh, funny, it can start consuming too much CPU time, it can start consuming too much uh, memory, and you need to look to see why is my system behaving uh, slower, why is the disk being used a lot, why, you know, whatever the problem is. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go over to a Windows desktop and start to talk you through how to use the task manager and how you can use it to spot tasks that are doing naughty things, even kill them if you need to, or generally just to look at the, the health of your system. Okay, let's go over to the desktop. Okay, so here I am on Windows 11. Now, to get to the task manager, it's really simple. You just go down to the taskbar here, right hand click. Now, you've got taskbar settings, but above that, you've got task manager. Another way to get to it is go to the start menu and just type task manager. And of course, it comes up just like any other app would. OK, I'm going to go full screen here. Now, we're going to deal with this processes screen in a moment, but I always find myself going, first of all, to performance. Now, performance gives you an overview of what your system is doing. On uh, some machines, you may also get another box here with GPU in it to show you if the GPU is being uh, used, so you can actually monitor that as a resource as well. Now, the first box here is the CPU. Basically, this line here is the usage. The higher the line, the bigger the light blue grayish area here, the more it's being used. Now, what I like to do is right hand click, change graph to logical processors, because this shows me all the cores running individually. The previous screen was the kind of the amalgamation or the average of all of those cores working together. And down here, you can see some numbers. So, for example, 3% utilization at the moment. You can see the clock speed, how many processes we've got running, uh, and so on. So, this is a really good way. If you see this up here running at 100%, 80 90%, you say, oh, well, hold on, there's something wrong here, or maybe there's something right, but let me at least see what it is that's consuming all of that CPU time. And we'll look more about that in a moment when we go to the processes tab. Now, the next tab is memory. At the moment, this is a pretty flat line, how much my memory is being used. On this machine, there's eight gigabytes in total. And we can see that at the moment, we're using uh, around uh, 2.3 gigabytes, it says here, in use, 29%. And then you can get some more numbers here about how that memory is being divided up, how it is being used. So again, if this is OK here, that's what you find. Of course, if you find it sailing up close here up to the top, then, of course, that can be a, a problem and you have to see what is it that's using up all of your memory. Disk I.O. again, how much the disk is being written to. 
you may find if you're downloading something uh, or if a Windows is downloading something for uh, you know a Windows update, then this usage is going to go very high. Sometimes when Windows Update is downloading lots of stuff, you may find that the CPU usage is quite low, memory is quite low, but the disk usage is massive and therefore everything feels sluggish because even if you want to start an app, it has to, of course, also access the disk and the disk is being hammered by the download. So again, a good way to look to see, well, what is what resource is being used on my machine? And the final one here on this machine, as I say, on some machines you also get a GPU usage, is how much network traffic there is. Are you downloading loads of stuff over the network? Is that causing uh, a problem when you're then trying to go to watch a YouTube video and it's stuttering and pausing? You don't know why. It's actually because your machine is actually downloading something else. Now, in many cases, when your machine is using a lot of resources, it's because that's what you've asked it to do. You're doing something. You're in, you're rendering a video. You're or downloading an update, you're installing a game, whatever it is. But sometimes when you think, hold on, there shouldn't be anything going on, this is the first place to come to to find out what's going on on your machine. Which leads us nicely to this processes. So this is a list of all the processes that are running on your machine. They are divided here into apps and background processes. Now background processes are not necessarily things that you are interacting with on the desktop, but they're things that happen in the background. And Windows does tend to have quite a few of them, 97 Windows processes running there, uh, 27 background processes. As you can see, you know, almost 100, over 120 processes are running here. Now, of course, most of the time they're not doing very much. Uh, and all these services are Windows services doing different things. Uh, you know, the licensing monitor, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we won't go into and probably couldn't go into because there's so much of it. But the most important thing here is as well as having it sorted by name, you can sort by one of those four different resources we were just looking at. So if you'll find your CPUs being used, you can click sort by CPU and it will show you which task is using the most CPU. So in this case, there's not much CPU being used. So it, it's all OK. Same with the memory. You can click on memory and it now lists it by memory use. We can see here that it's the virus scanner is basically using the most memory, 154 megabytes. OK, that's not a problem. And then all the other processes, each using a little bit at a time. Again, disk, which one is using the most uh, disk usage? Now, often it will be system or some kind of Windows update client or Windows uh, module installer, these kinds of things, because they are downloading updates, for example, to Windows. And you might find that's using a lot of uh, disk space. And the same again, you can click by network here and see which uh, process is using the most um, of the of the networking. Now, if we go back to the name sort here, you can go up here to run new tasks. If we run something very simple like Notepad, OK, up comes a Notepad and here it appears here. So you can now see any particular app that you're running and you can see what it's doing. So Notepad and uh, if you want to, you can end the task as well. So there we go. We, we got rid of it. So this shows you the task. Now, if you do have a task that's running away uh, and you don't know what it should be doing, you think it should be killing, you can click on it and then kill it. As I say, for Windows tasks, particularly things like ones that to do with Windows updating, you probably want to leave those running at least for a little while and see whether they calm down and finish their upload process. But if you've got something you've started and it's gone haywire, this is where you kill it. Now, there are a few other tabs here. For example, you can see which uh, uh, applications will get started automatically and you can change that. You can change their startup uh, kind of. So if you don't want OneDrive to be in here, you can disable that. Great, OneDrive isn't going to come up and bother me anymore once I've rebooted. Uh, same with the users. You can see which user. I've only got one user on this system. So all the things here are being used are under the current user's account. And details gives you more information. So it tells you not just the name and the CPU usage, gives you things like the process identification number, its current status. Uh, and also, this is a really important one, the architecture. Now, if you were running on a Windows on ARM, Windows on Snapdragon uh, laptop, for example, or Copilot PC, as they call it at the moment, you would see in there also the ARM architecture. And that's a really good way of seeing whether an app you've downloaded is actually a native ARM version 
for Windows or whether it's using the emulation. So that can be quite useful. I was using a Windows on ARM uh, laptop recently and I downloaded uh, VLC, but I downloaded the wrong one. So it's actually using the x86 version or the x64 uh, as it's called here, rather than running the native one. So I actually had to uninstall that one and then go ahead and install the native one. Uh, and that's because I clicked on the wrong download, but I looked in here to see that. So this can be really useful if you are running on an ARM. Uh, base machine. If you're just running on a x86, then the only thing can tell you is whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit. For example, here, this is clearly a 32-bit app. Everything else here is a 64-bit app. Okay, so what I've done is I've started up uh, Microsoft Edge, and I'm running a YouTube video. So the first thing to notice here is things are a bit more active than they were a moment ago. We can see that the CPU is being used, not very much. Memory usage has gone up now a little bit. We can see the hard disk is being used a little bit more. Obviously the ethernet is being used, networking as I'm downloading these videos over the internet. So if we go over here, here's my video and I've got lots of other uh, tabs uh, open here, okay, for things I've been searching for and so on. So it's interesting now, we can see that this is actually having an impact. And if we go to processes, we can see well, which is using the most CPU. Well, actually, there we go. You see Edge is actually bouncing here between Edge and the task manager. What's interesting, just to notice that, is that running a video doesn't actually take that much system resources, okay? So using YouTube is not that uh, hard on the system because a lot of it's done in the hardware and the GPU, and it's not that exhaustive to run uh, a, a, you know, a small a video like that. V memory uses though, we can see that, you know, I've, I've used a gigabyte of memory now just by going into Edge and opening up a couple of, uh, well, four or five tabs, whatever it was there. Disk usage again now is a slightly bit of disk usage because of course it's downloading things, it's caching things, and the same with network. And we can see the edge using now. This is not hammering the machine at all. We can see, you know, back here on the process, on the uh, performance page, the system's doing okay. But I am now using the system. This is the this is the point. Now, if I at the same time also try to let's see if we can uh, download. Uh, why don't we download um, Ubuntu? That'll be a nice big download. So we'll just. Uh, download a five gigabyte file here. Okay, that started to download. So if we now go back to here, we can see that the ethernet performance has gone straight up. Look at that, you see? As it's now downloading that file, it's really starting to use that quite a lot. And there will be some now peak usage in the hard disk, but not very much, because it kind of downloads a bit, writes it, downloads a bit, writes it. So it's not gonna be hammering the hard disk at all, though it is being used. Again, downloading doesn't really take much use from the CPU. So here's an interesting thing. You see a resource that's being used quite a lot, the Ethernet now, okay, doesn't necessarily mean that the CPU or the memory or the hard disk. So each resource is different. So it's very important to look to see what resource is being used and why it's being re reused. And if we go over to processes now, we can click on network. We can see, well, look, here it is. The edge is using a lot of the network traffic we haven't seen it that high before why oh well let me go and have a look what's the problem oh I, of course i'm downloading a file here of course that's taking up uh, you know um network bandwidth uh, and again cpu is not being used disk is being used more slightly but not very much so you know this is another good way to see what's going on okay so i've also now started up a, a browser benchmark jetstream 2 so that's now running uh, in this uh, browser tab here, and it's going to use some CPU. So if we now go over here to the CPU usage, and then we go to performance, again, we can see the CPU has gone up 25%, okay, but nothing is particularly killing it. And why is that? Well, if you go here to the usage, we can see that Edge is being used, and it is using the CPU, but it doesn't kill it so much. Uh, so even though it's running these different things, it's not actually... Uh, killing it and part of that is because some of these tests are mainly single core uh, kind of stuff it's not going to be running let's see if I can put that like that so it doesn't I don't know whether it's kind of slows down when it's not in view so here we go now by having them both up at the same time we can see here are 30 uh, percent uh, of the CPU 25 percent of the CPU is being used but that's because this isn't a multi-threaded test so again even running something like that uh, you know, my, my system can cope with it. As I said, if you want to kill things, you can. You can just click on this here, hit end task, and that's just going to kill it. And uh, our CPU 
and memory performance and everything's all going to go straight back down again. So that's really useful if you do find something that is uh, harming your system. Okay, so there you have it, Windows Task Manager. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.